Happy Resurrection Day, everyone. Welcome back, brothers and sisters in Christ, to the Esther Song of Praise channel. He is risen. I hope that you all are having a wonderful, beautiful Easter Sunday. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're new here, welcome. Please feel free to like the video, subscribe to the channel. Today, we are going to cover chapter 17 in our Wisdom Proverbs series. But today, I just am so filled with joy at the fact that our Lord and Savior is sitting at the right hand of the Father, for He is risen. Amen? Let's go ahead and give the Lord thanks today, and then we're going to get into the chapter. Heavenly Father, we come to you and we thank you so much, Lord God, for Calvary, for rising on the third day, Lord, for being seated at the right hand of the Father, Lord God, for your sacrifice and your blood that was shed for our sins, Lord God, that we can come to you in prayer, Lord, and we just praise and thank you, Jesus, for everything that you have done, Lord God, that you have risen, Lord, that you are no longer in that tomb, Lord God. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name, amen. The book of Proverbs chapter 17. Better a dry crust with peace and quiet than a house full of feasting with strife. A prudent servant will rule over a disgraceful son and will share the inheritance as one of the family. The crucible for silver and the furnace for gold, but the Lord tests the heart. A wicked person listens to deceitful lips. A liar pays attention to a destructive tongue. Whoever mocks the poor shows contempt for their maker. Whoever gloats over disaster will not go unpunished. Children's children are a crown to the age and parents are the pride of their children. Eloquent, eloquent lips are unsuited to a godless fool. How much worse lying lips to a ruler. A bribe is seen as a charm by the one who gives it. They think success will come at every turn. Whoever would foster love covers over an offense, but whoever repeats the matter separates close friends. A rebuke impresses a discerning person more than a hundred lashes of fool. Evil doers foster rebellion against God the messenger of death will be sent against them. Better to meet a bear robbed of her cubs than a fool bent on folly. Evil will never leave the house of one who pays back evil for good. Starting a quarrel is like breaching a dam, so drop the matter before a dispute breaks out. Acquitting the guilty and condemning the innocent, the Lord detests them both. Why should fools have money in hand to buy wisdom when they are not able to understand it? A friend loves at all times and a brother is born for a time of adversity. One who has no sense shakes hands and pledge and puts up security for a neighbor. Whoever loves a quarrel loves sin. Whoever builds a high gate invites destruction. One whose heart is corrupt does not prosper. One whose tongue is perverse falls into trouble. To have a fool for a child brings grief. There is no joy for the parent of a godless fool. A cheerful heart is good medicine but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. The wicked accept bribes in secret to pervert the course of justice. A discerning person keeps wisdom in view, but a fool's eyes wander to the ends of the earth. A foolish son brings grief to his father and bitterness to the mother who bore him. If imposing a fine on the innocent is not good, 
Surely to flog honest officials is not right. The one who has knowledge uses words with restraint and whoever has understanding is even tempered. Even fools are thought wise if they keep silent and discerning if they hold their tongues. Bless the reading of his word today. So a few of my takeaways are, of course, this last, <laughs> this last verse has saved me so many times and has kept me out of trouble <laughs> so many times where it says, even fools are thought wise if they keep silent and discerning if they hold their tongues. And I feel like that's so true, right? Like you can't get in trouble if you don't say anything oftentimes. So in order to just even be considered wise, even the most foolish person, if they're silent, even they're considered wise. So it's wisdom to hold our tongues often. And then another uh, favorite verse of mine is verse 17. A friend loves at all times and a brother is born for a time of adversity. And I feel like this is so true to have a real true friend. They're going to love you through the good and the bad and they'll be by your side. You know, they won't be offended if you don't necessarily um, check in often. You know, life gets in the way and people get busy, but true friends have your back no matter what. And right here it says a brother is born for a time of adversity. Family and blood are there when, you know, even your friends are unable to be. And so, and then, you know, maybe this isn't necessarily a blood brother or sister, right? It could be a brother or sister of Christ that's there for you in a time of adversity, in a time of real hardship. And I feel like that's what the Lord wants the church to be, right? A place of fellowship, a place where people can go and, you know, really lean on each other and lift each other up in times of hardship and, you know, discouragement, right? And that's why a lot of churches have testimony services where, you know, people can give praise to the Lord and say, you know, the Lord took me from this valley and, you know, helped me get to the mountaintop and helped me, you know, to overcome. And that's what the Lord wants for each and every one of us, you and me, to be overcomers in him, of overcomers in him that we can, you know, just continue to march forward and press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of Christ Jesus, like Paul said, you know, that we can do all things through Christ. And we really truly can, you know, Jesus said, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, you can look at this mountain and tell it to move and it'll move. And so whatever mountain is in your life, brothers and sisters, continue to keep the faith, continue to pray, continue to press. Like Paul said, you know, it's not easy. It's really not, but the Lord is with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. And he gives us what we need to be successful. You know, the Lord encourages us to, you know, put on the whole armor of God and to fight, you know, we're not fighting flesh and blood, but we're fighting principalities of darkness. And so the Lord is with us every single step of the way. And I'm so grateful on this Easter Sunday and this Resurrection Day that we can honor him and we can say thank you, Jesus, for, you know, for giving yourselves the Lamb of God, a living sacrifice that we may come before the throne of God and be covered by your blood and have all of our sins washed away, Lord, and just know that you are with us and that on our last day on this earth and as we take our last breath, Father, that you will open the gates of heaven and have our name written in the Lamb's book of life. I truly believe that. And I'm so grateful for each one of you, brothers and sisters. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Continue to, you know, live a life pleasing to the Lord and enjoy your resurrection day. And I will talk with all of you later. Take care. Bye.